We've previously discussed how using passive dense wave division multiplexing, DWDM, can help network operators achieve very high per fiber capacity using inexpensive passive DWDM filters in 40 or 80 channel variants. Using these filters and putting 10 gigabits per second circuits on each channel can push the data rate per fiber connection to more than 400 gigabits per second without expensive and difficult network switches. But if it's so easy and inexpensive, why aren't all data centers using this as a default for every fiber end? That's where things get a little tricky. Whenever you say DWDM to a data networking person, and even some service provider engineers, they tend to automatically think of large, complex, and expensive DWDM systems. For example, reconfigurable optical add drop multiplexing, ROADM systems are completely automated and perform optical switching, sub-signal aggregation, and even some L2 functions. But DWDM is simply the combination and separation of circuits by wavelength and is only a small part of those larger systems. It's the simple technology that allows users to put 40 plus distinct circuits on a given fiber and then separate them at the far end to connect to individual switch ports. As we've mentioned before, this is often done passively and requires no electrical power, software, or annual maintenance agreements. And it can be done at a fraction of the cost of those more complex active systems. So why don't we see this technology used more often in data center interconnects? Because DWDM system design and transport engineering are usually not taught during data networking education courses. DWDM and transport are often thought of as competing ways of architecting a network. This essentially creates two types of engineers, data network or transport. Either way, one typically needs the other at some point in the network. So let's understand the complexity and the need for software-controlled transport devices in your network. We'll focus on a few applications where you can get fiber capacity between two places quickly and inexpensively without sending anyone to school for new certifications. Let's take a look at point-to-point -point data center interconnects, DCI, on leased or owned fiber connections between campus facilities, and network facilities between rooms or floors. Using passive DWDM can reduce or eliminate leased or new fiber builds, maximize the data rate per fiber on installed fiber plants, drastically reduce the capex cost of high-capacity switches, complex DWDM systems, and reduce reliance on service providers for connection maintenance, and increase the speed of DCI connections. But how can we do this? It's relatively simple. Optical Link Engineering If you take the physical map of your network and zoom in on one span of the network where there is a capacity bottleneck, it becomes a lot easier. For simplicity, we'll focus on connecting 10G switch ports across a single span between 2 kilometers to 50 kilometers. This makes the math fairly simple. For those locations, we simply need to focus on two primary factors, link budget versus link loss and dispersion. Link budget versus link loss. Every optic or transceiver has a minimum transmit power and a minimum receiver sensitivity. If you subtract these two values, you're left with the link budget or the total amount of power loss the signal can experience while still being legible for the receiver. In a standard connection, you would calculate or measure the total loss of the fiber, patch channels, cassettes, and splices between the two optics. If that's less than the link budget, then it should work, right? Not necessarily. Passive DWDM adds a little more math to link engineering. The optics at each end would need to be specific DWDM optics, and the filters will add more insertion loss at each end. But the calculations remain pretty much the same. For 10G DWDM optics, the link budget is typically in the 23 decibel range. Therefore, if a fiber span with DWDM filters has less than 23 decibels of loss, the link should work. Simple math, or is it? Dispersion. Another important factor we need to account for is chromatic dispersion, CD. CD is a characteristic of single-mode fiber, where as a signal travels along a fiber route, it spreads out and arrives at the far end, slightly ahead or behind schedule. This makes it difficult for the receiver to decipher the signal. The optics that we use will establish how much dispersion it can tolerate before the signal becomes undetectable. The optics distance rating is typically measured in picoseconds per kilometer per nanometer. For instance, a DWDM optic rated for 80 kilometers is often limited to 1,360 picoseconds per kilometer per nanometer of dispersion. This is calculated based on traveling 80 kilometers on SMF28 type fiber with a CD rating of approximately 17 picoseconds per kilometer per nanometer. 
So if your link falls inside the specifications defined by the optics on each end, you can deploy passive DWDM to maximize the capacity of your fiber plan and save time and money. But what if the span exceeds the link budget or dispersion rating? No problem. The addition of erbium-doped fiber amplifiers will boost the signal power and or passive dispersion compensation modules to account for excess dispersion between the DWDM filters. This, in turn, can help extend the reach and ensure that the optics on each end perform to expectation for years to come. Summary When transport engineers speak to data network engineers, it can often seem like they're speaking different languages, and that's to be expected. Education, specialized jargon, terminology, and approaches to problems differ greatly. This doesn't mean that a data network engineer cannot successfully place transport equipment or vice versa. If your network desperately needs fiber capacity, lower cost of fiber infrastructure, or flexibility of lighting fast circuit, then turning up passive and amplified DWDM networks might be the perfect solution.